Hi, this is John Burke. Today I'm going to present uh, another presentation on bricks, this time simply on key facts. Let's look at the dates. In 2001, the acronym was coined by an economist from Goldman Sachs, but it's very interesting to note that same year, Russia, India, and China also called, also formed an organization called RICS based upon their security concerns after the U.S. invasion of Afghanistan. 2009 is the year of the first annual summit of country leaders and heads of governments. We can state that 2009 is the formal introduction of the BRICS group. 2010, South Africa is invited. 2015, very important. They establish a new development bank, a multilateral institution, and they also established the contingent reserve arrangement. The new development bank is designed to lend to emerging markets and developing countries because existing institutions like the IMF and World Bank have failed to provide the necessary financing to promote economic growth. 2023, watershed year. They admit five new members. Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates, each becoming an official member as of 2024. Population, big. In the aggregate, approximately 4 billion people live within the BRICS member states. This represents about 50% of the world's population. Now let's put this in perspective. The United States has 340 million people, but the United States economic, military, and political weight is incredibly large, but it is out of, it is not coordinated with its population size. Economic size of the BRICS, again, very significant. In the aggregate, 31 point trillion compared to uh, 45 trillion for the G7. While the group in the aggregate, including the new members, is still smaller than the G7, these countries are growing at faster rates than the existing G7 countries. And we can only expect the economic size to get larger and approximate, if not overtake, uh, the G7 economies in the aggregate. Here, how is, given their economic size, given their weight in population terms, how are these countries represented in world organizations such as the IMF? Well, we can see that it's, it's uncoordinated. It doesn't fairly reflect neither their economic size nor their population size. China, now one of the largest economies in the world, has 6% of voting rights within the IMF. We can compare that to the United States, which has 16%. So if we simply add together the voting weights of the original five countries, it's less than the voting weight of the United States. It simply doesn't make any sense. The BRICS have repeatedly called for reform of global institutions like the IMF to better represent emerging markets and developing countries, but this has mainly fallen on deaf ears, though there has admittedly been some reform, but not enough. This slide makes it clear. The United States has 16%. Japan has greater voting rights than China. The United Kingdom has greater voting rights than India. India's economy is much larger. The same with France and Italy. It is not reflective of economic or population reality. The new member states, I just want to talk about their resources. I'm not going to say why they were admitted. I'm not going to predict what will happen in the future, but it is noteworthy about the importance of resources. Ethiopia has water. It also has 
an incredible amount of natural gas, but it's been unexploited to date, and it has minerals. Egypt, arable land, farming, also water. Again, natural gas and petroleum, fossil fuels. Iran is amazing. It has an incredible range of resources from fossil fuels, minerals, arable land, to food. Saudi Arabia, needless to say, petroleum national, natural gas, but also important minerals. United Arab Emirates, petroleum, arable land, and also they are taking advantage of their climate to produce solar energy. BRICS future, impossible to predict. But if we look at the past, we can say some things about the future that might be realized. Since 2009, or even earlier, inter-BRICS trade has increased significantly. We can expect an increase in trade with the new members. The new members, over time, will be integrated into the BRICS trading system. This will allow those economies to uh, develop faster, to become larger, to become more modern. And it can be expected that countries uh, like China will be investing uh, into these economies in order to improve their economic uh, position. Thank you.